Hello everybody, uh, this is Asher. Uh, today we are going to start a work permit receiver course. This course is of five days. So on daily basis there will be a video. Uh, today we will finish the first day syllabus. The, tomorrow we will go for the second day syllabus and so on. So this work permit receiver course is specifically designed for Saudi Aramco permit to work receivers. WBR as we usually say. So this course will be very beneficial for those uh, who are inspiring uh, to be able to appear in the exam of uh, work permit receiver for third party and then they're going to schedule the exam for Saudi Aramco work permit receiver certificate. So uh, I hope you will like this session. Uh, so before starting the training, I would like to request to subscribe this channel so that you will get uh, early notification of the newly uploaded videos. So let's start. Uh, actually, the, we are having five days training schedule and uh, the first day we will discuss uh, about the general requirements of permit to work system as per the GI 2.100. Uh, GI means general instructions. So Saudi Aramco is having different type of GIs. But uh, for permit to work system, they have the GI 2.100, uh, which is a general instruction of permit to work system. Today, we will focus on this, this uh, general requirements. Then on the second day, we will uh, discuss about the hazard identification. On the third day, we will discuss about hot work and cold work permits. On the fourth day, we will discuss confined space entry permit. And the fifth day, uh, we will discuss about the loto lockout and takeout so uh, without any delay let's proceed towards the day first course so the day first course is uh, uh, as you see its general requirements of permit work system based on the gi 2.100 and uh, the objective of today's training session will be to give awareness regarding restricted area non restricted area Okay, we will discuss what are the restricted area of Saudi Aramco, what are the non-restricted area. Uh, then we will discuss about the types of work permits, roles and responsibilities of work permit issuers and receivers and coordinator as well. Uh, required qualifications and certifications of work permit issuers and work permit receivers as per general instruction GI 2.100 of Saudi Aramco. Process of work permit issuance, closing, and cancellation. So, uh, this, this, these all are the points which we are going to discuss in today's training session. Restricted and non-restricted areas. Restricted area, uh, actually, Aramco defines two types of area. One is restricted, and one is non-restricted. Uh, what is restricted area? Restricted area, you can define any area. Okay. Uh, within the proponent organization's area of responsibility which shall include but not limited to the areas within 23 meter of hydrocarbon containing pipeline manifolds or scrapper launcher or receivers so any area which is within the radius of 23 meter or 75 foot of uh, saudi aramco's live pipeline containing hydrocarbons okay it could be the manifold it could be scrapper or receiver launching areas so we will consider it as a restricted area and uh, this is about the hydrocarbon pipeline and if uh, what if there would be an adjust power line of saudi aramco so the uh, the uh, as per saudi aramco the areas within 15 meter 50 feet of energized power line will be considered as a restricted area okay or as per classified location which is given in this standard saudi ramco engineering standards b 468 electrical classification so uh, these are the areas which uh, ramco is uh, categorizing as a restricted area and the last one is the areas where explosive or radioactive material are used or stored so th these all areas will be defined as a restricted area and what is a non restricted area all other areas other than uh, restricted area will be considered as non restricted area like these are the uh, 
limitations of the restricted area and all other areas other than these these points uh, will be considered a, considered as a non restricted area and now let me tell you one thing that whenever there will be a restricted area the aramco permit will be utilized okay uh, internal permit of the contractor he cannot use contractor cannot use internal work permit he have to secure saudi aramco work permit and the issuer will be from saudi aramco proponent side and the issuer will be uh, sorry the receiver will be from uh, the contractor and he should have a saudi aramco work permit receiver valid certificate uh, so let's talk something about uh, the types of work permit uh, how many types of work permits uh, we have in saudi aramco we have four types of work permit like first one is cold work permit the second one is confined space entry permit then we have hot work permit then we have eolb equipment opening and line breaking permit actually uh, saudi aramco have uh, done some amendments in in its gi 2.100 uh, and uh, after uh, july 2016 Uh, they changed the name of the permit uh, from uh, gas release permit to equipment opening and line breaking permit so the new name of gas release permit is equipment opening and line breaking permit so uh, the most common question in the work permit receiver exams is this that uh, they 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 will ask you that how many types of work permit we have in saudi aramco so the work permit means the the permission to start the work so these are the two work permits one is cold work permit and this is hot work permit but if we will talk about the general one like permit to work system how many types of permits we have so then we have four types of permit but if uh, he will ask specifically for the work permit so these two hot work permit and cold work permit are the uh, types of work permit because confined space entry permit is a type of permission that one can enter into a confined space he is permitted to uh, enter the confined space but he cannot perform the activity inside confined space until or unless he will be having any type of uh, related work permit similar thing with equipment opening and line breaking permit if someone is going to open the line it it means that he can open the line if he will secure this permit but how he will open the line either uh, he have to use some uh, power tool like uh, including which includes the flame or something if either he have to cut the bolts so he have to secure the appropriate work permit accordingly now what are the general requirements for the cold work permit work activities that will not produce sufficient energy to ignite flame flammable atmosphere or combustible materials okay Uh, then we will use cold work permit uh, the color of uh, cold work permit is usually blue it's uh, with saudi aramco form number this is the form number it's it's same uh, it it will be similar for all cold work permits of saudi aramco the color will be remain the same uh, hazards must be evaluated during joint site inspection jsi which super, uh, work permit issuer and receiver Uh, usually do without uh, 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 prior to issuing the work permit then basic precautions of conducting atmospheric gas test wearing okay so uh, what could be the general requirements for hot work permit it will be that the, those for those activities that may produce enough energy to ignite flammable atmosphere or combustible materials for example welding cutting grinding abrasive blasting use of internal combustion engines working on live electrical apparatus etc so uh, i have mentioned here that use of like in internal combustion engine means that any equipment any heavy equipment uh, which is uh, in which ic engine is installed for example crane backhoe side boom any heavy equipment so all of these equipments are being operated by ic engine so it means that you have to secure the hot work permit so the color of hot work permit is red with uh, saudi aramco form number 98732 all sewers within 23 meter of ignition source must be sealed to prevent escape of flammable and combustible gases you have to ensure that wherever there is a hot work permit 
uh, all sewers within 23 meter of ignition source must be sealed uh, to prevent escape of these uh, flammable and uh, combustible gases. Uh, then you have to ensure that whenever there is a hot work permit, the LEL lower explosive limit of flammable must be zero. Uh, during hot work activity, train fire watch must be present all the time. And once the activity will, will be finished, he should stay uh, on the site even for 90, uh, even for 30 minutes after the hot work activity is finished. Okay. Now, what are the general requirements for the confined space entry permit? Uh, for confined space entry permit, it is, it is issued for all types of confined spaces. Uh, what is confined space? Confined space is actually a space uh, which is not designed for permanent human occupancy, which has limited uh, access and egress, okay, and uh, which can have the hazards of uh, like oxygen lacking okay and uh, the or the presence of flammable or combustible gases in it so this is how we can define a confined space so the confined space entry permit is of green color with Saudi Ramco form number 98734 the gas test is required for this work permit like the what kind of gases you have to test you have to test oxygen you have to test carbon monoxide you have to test flammable combustible gases and hydrogen sulfide H2S uh, then you have to assign the confined space entry supervisor. You have to ensure that the confined space entry supervisor is there and stand by, stand by man is there and rescue team is ready on site. Okay, and stand by man is not allowed to go inside confined space uh, to rescue the uh, entrants in case of emergency. Okay, he is not allowed to go inside. This is the common question he may ask you. Then restriction of all types of compressed gas cylinders in a confined space. Any type of compressed gas cylinder is not allowed in a confined space. If someone have to perform the welding, gas welding inside confined space, he have to extend his hoses. He have to extend uh, the reels, uh, the hoses of the uh, gas cylinders, right? So, but uh, he cannot uh, bring compressed gas cylinder inside a confined space. Okay. Uh, development of confined space entry plan prior to entry and permit issuance we will be having a separate session on how to develop a confined space entry plan okay uh, work activities in a confined space may require a hot work or cold work permit in addition as i told you that confined space uh, permit entry permit is not a work permit it's only a permission to go inside confined space now if you have to perform any activity you have to secure a relative permit in addition uh, here I want to mention that even uh, fire extinguisher is not allowed inside confined space. Fire extinguisher should be present at the entrance of confined space along with the standby man. Okay. And SCBA is only allowed in case of emergency. Okay. Uh, like uh, one cannot perform activity inside confined space uh, while wearing SCBA. Okay. SCBA is just only for emergency rescue purposes. Now uh, let's talk something about general requirements for gas testing in confined space as you can see in this table that these are the gases which we have to ensure and these are the limits uh, like this is the safe limit if oxygen is uh, above 20% and below 23.5% okay uh, LEL should be less than 5% if there is no hot work activity a carbon monoxide should be less than or equal to 35 ppm h2s should be less than or equal to 10 ppm now uh, this is permitted only while continuously wearing at atmospheric supplying respirator let me tell you one thing here uh, here he uh, is mentioning atmospheric supplying respirator so atmospheric supplying respirator is totally different than scba scba is self-containing breathing apparatus but saba is supplied air breathing apparatus so uh, how if you have to perform the activity in a confined space and you and the gas conditions are not feasible uh, so th these are the gas conditions so you can only allow uh, the activity while wearing uh, continuously atmospheric supplying respirator it is a respirator with continuously supplying fresh air okay uh, and uh, the the source of the air is outside the confined space right so these these are the limits then if, if these are the condition of the gases, 
so you will not allow the entry the no entry is permitted like oxygen is greater than 23.5 LDL sure is greater than or equal to 50 percent the carbon monoxide is exceeding uh, 1200 ppm and dash stress is exceeding uh, 100 ppm so this is not suitable condition so the no entry permit uh, no entry will be permitted and uh, for EOLB equipment opening and line breaking permit, the purpose of equipment opening and line breaking permit process is to ensure the safe initial opening of equipment, vessel or piping that is part of a closed system and contains or has the potential to contain flammable, combustible, toxic or injurious material, for example, high pressure steam. Uh, opening of oil and gas line or system, opening steam and condensate lines or systems, opening lines or system containing H2S or N2 and uh, LOTO must be applied, LOTO lockout tagout uh, procedure must be applied before opening a line, okay. Okay gentlemen, thank you so much uh, for watching and do not forget to subscribe the channel. Uh, and click the bell icon so that you can get the early notification for the newly uploaded videos. Thank you so much.